Bishop Larry Jackson currently serves as the Southeast Regional Bishop for the Fellowship of International Churches. That is uh, with uh, my good friend Bishop Wellington Boone. He is the founder and national bishop. Uh, pastor Larry Jackson is the founding pastor of Bethel Outreach International Church as well as the founder and president of true, the True Value of Women Movement and the Frontliners Men's Ministry. Bishop Jackson, da Jackson ministers across the nation and internationally as a keynote speaker in churches, at conferences, and many citywide events. He's been working with Watchmen, doing some great things in North Carolina. He is the author of several books, including Numbered with the Transgressors, Guilt-Free Living, Knowing God by the Numbers, The Power is in the Closet, The True Value of a Woman, First Comes Love, One Degree of Change, and Beyond Reconciliation, which he co-authored with pa Pastor Michael Fletcher. Bishop Jackson also serves on the board as a board member of the Oak Initiative. He and his wife, Joandra, uh, currently reside in North Carolina with their four, uh, four of their five daughters. Please welcome Bishop Larry Jackson. Bless you, brother. Bless you. Bless you. Well, good morning, everyone. Phenomenal stuff about John, wasn't it? Amen. Amen. I have the awesome privilege of talking to you concerning partnership and unity. And I want to take you immediately um, right to the scripture. I want to go to St. John chapter 17, which many of us would, would do. But I want to bring some things out to you that I think will help you a great deal this morning. Is that okay? Amen. Amen. So let's, let's, let's go right there. St. John chapter 17 and verse 9. I want to go all the way down into verse 9 and hear what Jesus is saying here. He says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which has given, you have given me, for they are, thi uh, 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 are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. He says, and now... I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, and they, that they may be one as we are. Did you hear what he said? That they may be, I can't hear y'all. That they may be what? One, one as we are. Now, it's interesting, though, when you look at the Greek, that maybe makes us think about something happening in the future. In the Greek, it doesn't deal with the future. Jesus actually said that they may continue in their oneness. So he's dealing with the fact that they're already one, and he wants them to continue in that oneness. So he was not saying something's going to happen in the future. He's saying something has already happened, and it needs to continue. But we hear that a lot of times because of the way it's written in our text, that we hear something happening in the future. So let me give you, let me give you a little background. Um, I, I, I was in Fayetteville, North Carolina in 1995, and um, we started working with pastors. Um, matter of fact, a very good friend of John Bevere's, um, um, Dr. Al Bryce, Michael Fletcher, and myself, we were left in a prayer meeting where we brought the city together in prayer, and after the prayer meeting, we were left there, the three of us, to talk. We decided at that time that we knew we had to combat what was going on in the city of Fayetteville and that region because it was, it was very, very, very bad off as far as crime and sexual immorality because Fayetteville is a military town. And so you have, you have Bragg Boulevard that is full of nothing but adult men places. And you've got crime up and down that, up and down that quarter. And, and all of that was taking place. And we, so we said, well, what are we going to do about this? Well, we understood one of the things that we had to do. We had to come together and pray on a regular basis. So we said, we've got to bring these pastors together to pray on a regular basis. And we've got to partner beyond uh, and go across denominational lines. Everybody know what I'm talking about. And so as we were doing that, we said, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to call ourselves? And we came up with a name. We came up with a name. We called ourselves Unified 95 because it was the, the year 1995, and we said we are already unified. So we want to be Unified 95. So we connected it to that as Unified 95. So 
that, that went well, but we knew that if we're going to keep this thing going, Unified 95 wouldn't happen and wouldn't work in 96. <laughs> so what we realized was we got to change this name. And so we decided to change the name. We changed the name from Unified 95 to Unified 2000. Now, now that, that was not because we were looking at the year 2000 either. It was because we realized that we had already been unified for 2,000 years, and it was time that we act like it. Are y'all with me so far? Now, the Unified 95 name actually was to bring these pastors together across the nominational lines, across racial barriers. That actually was the maybe. That was the, that was the text. We were reading the text of maybe one. We weren't reading the text, continuing oneness. See, the, the Unified 2000 name had to deal with continuing oneness. Because why? We've already been unified, so we need to now function as a unified front. And so what we started doing, we started coming together. And as we came together, we knew we had to be unified in heart, in mind, and in will. We had to break down every barrier, not just because of denomination and race. We had to break down our own mental barriers. In order for us to work together right, we've got to break down all of our barriers of will. Are y'all not helping me? And so when we did this, what happened was, what was amazing, what we didn't even understand that was going to happen, is that the crime rate just started plummeting. Why? Because men of God, women of God in the city decided to come together and work together as one that was already one and didn't know it, and we were the best kept secret in the city of changing the city. And so the, so the crime rate just started going down. Every year after we came together, the crime rate just started going down and just going down and going down. Our churches started to grow without us having to advertise. Our events were successful because we no longer were in competition with one another and we could support one another. Y'all not helping me? I, I got some stuff for you. I got some stuff for you. I got some stuff for you. Man, man it, was, it was so awesome. The other thing that we decided to do was each one of us became the associate pastor of every other church in the city. Why, why did we do that? Because now a person can't leave one church and come to my church <laughs> because I'm the associate pastor of that church. And we knew one another at that level, of that level of intimacy of where we were breaking bread together and we were working together and we were, we, we were fellowshipping together we were, and we were, we were working with the mayor, we were working with the police chief. All of that was taking place because we decided and we dared become one the way the Lord told us to become. Are you with me so far? Now, I, I got a little, little demonstration over here for you. Um... What, what, happened, what happened with me was, what I realized was that when we were trying to function as Unified 95, we were functioning as these two cups. Now, I, I, I found a, 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 a different color cup, a blue cup. Couldn't find a black cup. I wanted me a black cup, but they ain't had no black cups in the hotel. So I got as close to us as we could get. <laughs> what I realized was one day as I was reading the scripture, I realized that we were, if you will allow me to, I'm going to use this bucket as Jesus. Can I use Jesus as a bucket? It is silver. Silver is for redemption, so let's keep going. And I realized that these two cups were working together, filled with the same substance, but could never be one. They could spend a lot of time together. They got the same thing in them. They could talk about how that affects them how they feel about it, who got filled first, 
Who got the most feeling? They could do projects together, but they still will continue to be different cups. They got the same stuff in them, though. And I realized that that is not what Jesus was talking about. And the reason why he used continued was because of how we started. Therefore, if any man, I ain't getting no help in the room. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Somebody tell me that what? Old things did what? And everything became new. So then that can't work if we're dealing with being in Christ. And so what I realized was, if we're still trying to be reconciled, we don't understand that that phrase he made, as we are. Because it's easy to talk about the unity of the Godhead and never function in it ourselves. See, he said, as we are. He said, I want them to be one as we are. Well, if I'm still dealing with reconciliation, we don't know as we are. If I got to wash your feet and you got to wash mine, we don't understand as we are. If you have resources that I need and you won't give them to me, I ain't getting no help in this room. (laughs) You don't understand as we are. If I'm talking about you behind your back about the resources you have that you didn't give to me, (laughs) we still don't understand as we are. I ain't getting no help from y'all. The as we are is so important because he says, I'm not trying to get you into oneness. I'm trying to get you to function just like the Godhead. And if we learn how to function as a Godhead, then it's no problem. Matter of fact, once I get in Christ, Paul told us how to live in Christ. It's clear in the book of Galatians. He said this. He says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. What did he tell you? He said, there is no culture, there are no rights, and there is no gender. If there is no culture, hello somebody, then I'm in the earth in this earth suit, but I'm masquerading. And so when I'm around most people, they think I'm black. (laughs) Oh, I do this well, man. I do this well. I know how to do this, man. I can do this, man. I can do the collard greens and and come on in the ribs and... Come on, I I can do this well, man. I can talk the jogging, but I am not from the earth, glory to God. I'm from heaven, and I happen to take into a residence on the inside of this suit. If if I don't get that right, I don't understand that he is in a suit that doesn't, doesn't represent who he is. He came from heaven. He just happened to be in a white suit. We're the same person. That's as we are. So our partnership had to go from this right here to go to this right here, whereby both of the cups is submerged in Christ so that you no longer can find the cups, the identity is no longer the cups. The identity now is Jesus Christ. If I had taken those cups and stirred what was in it when it was outside, the stirring would have taken place on the inside of the cup, but it wouldn't have moved the cup. Which is the reason why we can get stirred to work together but never move into the action of working together because I can control the stirring when I'm outside of him. But if I move this water right now, 
I don't know about you know, but everything in that bucket is moving with the water because it does not have an ability to now stand on its own. It's one in Jesus Christ. That's where we got to go. Come on. That's where we got to go. That's what we got to do. We've been doing it wrong too long. Not going to be one. We are one. Somebody tell somebody sitting next to you. Tell me, say, we are. We are one. We're not trying to become one. So I'm, I'm reading the scripture where we would go all the time and we love going to Psalms 133 when we start talking about partnership and unity and all of that. <laughs> Let's go over there. Let's just go over there. It's good. Let's just go over there. It's so good. I was looking at something, man, and I, I said, my goodness, this is good. Behold. Matter of fact, when you read the word behold, you can't read the word behold and go behold. <laughs> That's not the understanding of, the, of, the, of, the, of that word in the text. The, the word behold is an announcement. Come on. It is, it is somebody trying to get somebody's attention. It's behold! <laughs> it's trying to get you to wake up, look at this, check this out. You need to, you need to really see this. Don't just walk past me. Behold. Watch this. Behold what? How good, come on, and how pleasant. Come on, somebody help me. It is for what? Who, who, who's dwelling together? How are they dwelling together, though? In unity. Now, watch. He says, that, it, it is awesome. And then he says, it is like. So now he's going to compare what this unity is like. Now, we can get all hung up in verse 1, and 2, and 3, but we already know what we're talking about. We're talking about brethren dwelling together in unity. Now, I'm going to have to tell you something that's going to be blessed, and then, then I'm going to get out of your way. Watch this. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Hallelujah. So this, this, uh, what we found was this gathering together, this working together brought an anointing to our lives that we could not have gotten otherwise. Amen. It was an anointing that took place in our lives when we were working as one that we didn't find necessarily on Sunday morning in our pulpits. It was something that happened in the room, in the gathering that we said, my goodness, there's a power in this place that we don't normally get to see. It's a power to change stuff. So, you know what, this is amazing to me because when I look at the news and I look at the cities and I look at what's going on in their cities, I always wonder who is in this city working together to change it? Which, which pastors are together? When I go into a city, I ask this question, are the clergy in this city working together? Are the pastors in this city working together? Why? Because I understand if I can connect into that, I can connect into the, the, the anointing that's already in the city. I'm, I'm, am, am I ahead of y'all? Are y'all getting this? But this is what I saw. He says, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon mounts of Zion, for there the Lord did what? Commanded the blessing. Yeah, you know what? We always want to run to the commanding of the blessing. We always want to do that commanding of the blessing thing. We want that blessing thing, don't we? But I, I'm, I'm a golfer. Anybody play golf? You, you know you can't go to heaven unless you play golf? Y'all didn't, didn't know that. The apostle Paul told you he finished his course. So watch this. This is what I want you to understand. I've gone out early in the morning because see in North Carolina, it gets kind of hot. And there's some humidity that shows up 
that you, you are drenched by 10 o'clock. Come on, if you're in the South, y'all know what I'm talking about. By 10 o'clock, you go outside and be ha hanging out at about 10 o'clock, you can feel like, my God, what in the world? M matter of fact, it'll keep you from going to hell. It really will. <laughs> you don't want to go to hell if you live in the South. So when you go, go play golf, there's this early in the morning, a lot of times, a lot of guys don't want to go out because it's wet because of the, I can't hear you, because of the what? Dew. The dew. There is this, there is this, there's this dew on the ground that came out of the air. Because see, what we got to understand is that all air has in it water. Come on. It's not just H2O. It has water up in there. Come on, hello, somebody. And so based on the amount of heat that is in it, out, it determines how much humidity is going to show up that time, at that day. How much water is going to show up? And the water is for the refreshing. What I realized was, he said, the dew of Hermon is going to come. The, the hotter it gets, the more dew we're going to produce. That's not for us. The anointing's for us. The dew is for the refreshing of the, of the, of the people that's around us. Because they're living in the heat of the day and the moments. And what we found out was our city became a prosperous city for folk that won't even come into our churches. The dew hit them. Why? Because it was a people functioning in unity. So, we're standing in a meeting. Listen to me, pastors. You want to you you see a change happen in your city? We standing in a meeting and I heard a pastor say this. He says, you know what? People that's coming through this city that's bringing drugs into this area, Lord, even if they're just driving through, I want them caught. Well, he said, that was a pretty nice prayer. Two weeks later, some guys coming through on the bus and the policeman said, can we check your bags? Now, you know you can say no. Anybody know you can say no? Yeah, you could say no. Back in that day, you definitely could say no. And they can't check your back. They said, go ahead. Full of drugs. Caught them going through. People going I-95 because I-95 and, and, and uh, up 95, they're going from Miami to New York and Fayetteville is right in the center. People going, getting pulled over and drugs not making it to his destination. Because one pastor stood in the midst of that unity and declared that people just going through our city is going to get stopped. Are y'all hearing me? Let me, let me listen, listen. I'm, I've got, I, got, I got several more things to tell you before my, all my time goes. Listen to me. So there's a lady that's driving because we decided that we would walk our neighborhoods and pray over them. Amen. But not only that, we told people that couldn't walk, drive. So we did drive by praying. So people would drive their through the neighborhood, and this lady would drive through this neighborhood, and she constantly saw one house that constantly bothered her. And she said, God, I don't know what's going on in that house, but whatever is going on in the house, I want you to change what's going on in the house. What she didn't know is that the largest drug dealer in the area lived in that house. The SBI could not bust this guy because he never would get his hands dirty. She don't know any of that. All she knows is that this house is bothering me every time I pass by, and I want that house to be changed, glory to God. And it was not more than a month when the FBI said the case came together, and they bust the guy that was in the house because one lady dared drive by the house and pray. Oh, y'all not helping me. Because the church of Jesus Christ had come into divine unity. See, we, 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 I think we're spending money and we're doing things that we could get just because if we decide to work together across the lines. If we broke down and we realized Jesus has to be what? All and in all. It has to be all about him. It can't be about us. And once we get it, he'd start doing the work. 
He'll start doing the word and see, watch this. When we start functioning like this, we start loving one another. Let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you one more story before I, before I finish. We, we, I'm sitting in a, in, a, in, a, in a restaurant. We're sitting in a restaurant. Matter of fact, it was Dr. Al Bryce and myself. We're sitting in a restaurant. We were at, um, we were, we were at um, um, oh my God, where were we? The, the Rose, Lord Jesus, seafood place. Um, um, they got the good rolls. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> We're at Red Lobster, man, because you go there for the rolls. Glory to God. <laughs> and the waitress came over to us and said to us, you know, um, um, can I help you anymore? And we said, no, no, you were good. Say, but let me ask you a question. Do you go to church? She said, no, I don't go to church yet. I just moved to the area. I said, good. So what kind of church would you like to go to? She said, well, my church was a Baptist church, da, da, da. I said, great. Oh, my goodness. I said, look, this is what you need to do. See, right down the street right down here is Village Drive Baptist Church. Um, my, my, my friend down there, Bruce, he is, he is a pastor. You, you, need to go, you need to go there. They said, she said to us, well, do y'all go there? We said, no, we are pastors. <laughs> she said to us, then why didn't you invite me to your church? I said, because you didn't tell us you wanted to come to our kind of church. You said you came from a Baptist tradition, and that's why I want to see you, because I'm the associate pastor down at Village Drive, and all you got to do, oh, you better hear what I'm trying to tell you. It is my job to build up that church as well as to build up my church because it's one church in this city and it's the church of Jesus Christ and we're going to change what's going on in this city. So whenever you're looking for a church in this city, you can go to any church and find the anointing of the living God because we are one body functioning under one Lord, one spirit. Oh, y'all got to hear me? And she was just blown away, just blown away, because two pastors sent her to another church. But every week, every week, my church was growing. Dr. Bryce's church was growing. Michael's church was growing. growing. And we were, we were not trying to grow the church. We were trying to be the church. And as we did that, Jesus said, I will build my church. And what, that's what we realized. We realized we didn't have one. We realized that we were being responsible in his church. I, I don't have a church. To this day, I don't call the church my church. I don't have one, and I don't have any people. I don't have no church and no people. They're not mine. You want to give them away when they're acting up anyway. <laughs> so don't ever possess them. So I talked to Jesus about his people. <laughs> no, I don't have any. I don't have any people, Jesus. These are your folk. They acting up. Deal with them, Lord. Deal with them. <laughs> Deal with them, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Keeps me free. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so when we understood this, I'm just telling you guys, get this, get this. See, what you need to do, listen, listen. Go home, and you don't have to have a whole bunch of folk. You don't have to find a whole bunch of them yet. Just find light-minded ones. Start sharing. Come on, start sharing together. Start working together. Are you, are you hearing me? Come on, come on, come on, come on. You, you, see, you, see, that, you see that CIT meeting that's going to take place at First Baptist? Come on. That, and that's in Charlotte now. We, 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 we know one another. We're, 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 we're friends. Why? He's in a whole nother, a whole nother county. But we're friends. You know why? Because we work that way in our city still today in Charlotte. We work across the lines. We work to bring everybody together so there's one church, one mindset. Come on, one heart in our city. And, if, and I promise you, if you go home and you get that done, man, everything you do will now prosper at a level that you've never seen it prosper before because he knows how to take care of what belongs to him. God bless you.